right, so the, the first one, we're discussing smoke signals today and our research project. The first thing, before I ask questions, does anyone have a question about the plot, about the narrative of the film? Any, anything that was confusing to you? Okay, so that is actually the second question, the theme. All right, so can anyone, does anyone have any idea what was the, the theme of this film? What was director Chris Eyre trying to do? Hello? Uh, I think there are maybe a two things about this movie. The first one is about the Indians. Like, in the first act, the Indians live in the reservation instead of uh, living with a lot of uh, men, such as whites, and they, they don't have the reservation that the Brahmins have for them. And I think the second thing is about forgive, because the father of Victor left him early in her childhood, and then at the end of the movie, uh, the Victor forgave her, his father for leaving him and uh, uh, setting the fire on the Thomas house accidentally. And I also think maybe the uh, even if the Thomas uh, Thomas uh, didn't, didn't know that uh, his father, uh, the Victor's father, bombed his house, but I think he actually forgave the Victor's father. So I think there are two things about this movie. Okay, anyone have something to add? Um, please. Any thoughts? What is Thomas's purpose in the story? Janet? I think it's just to said, I would make it kind of more specific. The, the first one, okay, the second one is forgiveness within the context of coming of age. So as, as Janet said, uh, the, um, they grew up together. And I think through the, the course of the film, uh, Victor becomes a man. And, and as, he, as he said, you know, Thomas already seems to be a man. He's confident in his identity. And so even, even though he's kind of nerdish and the weak one, he's actually the stronger one because he, he knows who he is and Victor doesn't know who he is. And I think by forgiving his father, he realizes who he's become. And I think he, he's a man at the end of the story. Father 
never get arrested. And the first he was accused of attempted murder, and then he was accused of assault with a deadly weapon. And at last he was accused of being an idiot in the 19th century. So is that kind of discrimination then? Yeah, I think it's a kind of humor, a self-deprecating humor. So it's not a crime to be an Indian in the 20th century, but you might feel it is a crime because society wants you to disappear. And you're not disappearing. You're not living, but you're not disappearing. And so I think, I think many would be more comfortable if there were no Indians in the 20th century. Does that answer your question? Yeah, actually, I think uh, I agree with the Reynolds Strickland opinion about this per about the purpose of this movie. Uh, he said Indian filmmakers and actors intend to suffocate the old image and convert the screen Indian into a real Indian. So uh, then I come with the rap rap films. Rap films. Uh, Indians are always dead men and the cowboys are heroes. Indians are uh, described as robbers, killers, and they are the ugly, dirty, and uh, something like that. So when a cowboy kills an Indian, he becomes famous or a hero. And uh, I think this, this kind of movie, the smoke signals um, actually want to show the audience that Indians are common. They have common feeling, uh, in emotion about the other person, just like white people, just like us. So Indian are not strange; they are part of our life. Okay. All right. So any other any, any other students want to talk about the, the question, the narrative, the story, or the themes of this film before we go to the third question? Well, I guess it depends on what you think it means. So there's two figurative metaphors, the children of fire and the children of ash. So let's take them separate. What do you think a child of fire is? I saw Victor's father more as a child of ash than a child of fire. So, so why, why do you think he's a, do you think he's a child of fire because he accidentally lit the fire? So, so I was more looking at um, why, so he didn't light the fire on purpose. He, he lit the fire by accident because he was drunk. So for me, the question is why was he drunk? And then he's drunk because he's a child of ash. That all the time he's talking like 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 uh, like she made a good point uh, about uh, about some of the things he said. Like uh, he said that day the Indians won when they were playing basketball, and he was saying he's a magician. He can wave his magic wand, and all the white men go back to Paris and London and Europe. So I I think to me he. In, in those comments, he's, I think he's a very angry, you know, not angry, it's kind of defeated person. So he, because he's a defeated person, a child of ash, empty, he gets drunk and then because he's drunk, he starts to fire. So I saw Victor more as a kind of child of fire who is just filled with so much anger. So to me, the fire is anger and the ash is hopelessness. That's an interesting question. Anyone else have any uh, thoughts about those metaphors of child of fire, child of ashes? So what do you, what do you think about child of ash then? Um, 
kind of more literal. Yeah. I'm kind of more metaphysical. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's because you're young and you still have hope, so you're still children of fire. And I am a child of that. So. Okay. Uh, that was part of the humor of the film, that for, for white people in America, and black people, for, for civilized people in America, we drive our car to work. So in the morning, we turn on the radio and we listen to the radio because the radio will tell us where the traffic is bad. So on the Indian reservation, one, there's very few cars and very few traffic, but it's kind of a joke, it's humorous, that the Indian still sits out there looking for the traffic and giving a traffic report. Uh, and, and if you notice, it says his van has been broken down there for like 20 years. So it's kind of like that's where he lives. He lives on top of his van and gives traffic reports. So it's kind of a, a satire of, of, you know, like civilized people caring so much about the traffic. What's going on right now in uh, uh, North Dakota? So they want to, they actually did build the pipeline and they're piping oil through the Indian Reservation, the head of the, the Missouri River, I believe, and the Native Americans are trying to stop it. And uh, the government, uh, the police very violently came in and, and burned down their houses and beat them and shot them with rubber bullets and tear gas. Um, so, so right now there's, there's a huge struggle going on uh, between the Native Americans and the government over the oil pipeline. Uh, there's another legal struggle that's going on. Um, this involves the, the, the Bureau of Indian Affairs is supposed to control the Indians money. And uh, they refuse to update their computer equipment and the judge has ordered them to do so, but they're, they're reluctant to do so because no one really knows where the money has gone. Uh, so, and uh, the, other, the other interesting thing is in South Dakota, the Lakota Indians have declared themselves an independent country. Uh, of course, they're not independent, they're in the middle of the United States, but there's still this struggle that, that's taking place uh, as, Let's see, Brian. Uh, uh, you did you did a paper on oh, yes, Leonard? Yes. Huh? Yes. Uh, on on uh, Leonard Peltier. Right. So he can tell you about uh, Leonard Peltier. Can you can you tell her a little bit about Leonard Peltier? Uh, he's uh, he's an uh, American Indian activist, and he uh, tried his best to uh, to to improve the status of uh, Native Americans, and he did a lot of things, but. Uh, uh, but he finally failed, and uh, he was put into the prison. And uh, uh, until now, he has uh, put into prison for uh, 40 years. Yeah. So I think there's, there's a lot of struggles going on, and there's a lot of anger in the 20 years since this film was made. 